Renowned lawyer and senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Femi Falano, yesterday described as dangerous judicial trend the recent tendency by courts to sanction voters and deprive them of their rights to elect leaders of their choice due to the mistakes of some electoral officers. Falano made the assertion in a television program. He called for the review of some recent judgments delivered by the Court of Appeal, which sacked two governors of opposition People's Democratic Party in Zamfara and Plateau states, and a new Nigeria People's Party governor in Kano State. Similarly, the PDP yesterday called on the Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJ and Justice Lukayo Diari Wola, to defend the integrity of the judiciary by setting up a judicial inquest into alleged public boasting by leaders of the ruling APC that the party had persons in the judiciary, particularly at the Court of Appeal, at the Supreme Court, who will do their bidding on election cases before the courts. Also, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 elections, Atiku Abuaka, has raised alarm over what he says are attempts by the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, to derail Nigeria's democracy using subterfuge. Atiku says the APC snatch, grab, and run agenda of opposition parties' mandates is inimical to democracy. The former vice president argues that the ideal notion of democracy does not just reside in a representative government, but is essentially rooted in the plurality of ideas. Dr. Bati. Okay, a number of issues there. Let's start with uh, Mr. Femi Falano, SAN, who has said that, uh, look, uh, voters should not be punished for the errors of electoral officials, that is, INEC officials. And that the judgments in Plato, Zamfara, Kano, in which uh, opposition party sitting governors were adversely affected, should be reviewed uh, by the uh, courts, in this case, the Supreme Court, since all the aggrieved parties have the right to go to the Supreme Court, which is the final uh, court with regard to uh, governorship elections. Now in uh, Zamfara, Governor Dauda Lawal was uh, declared not as the winner of the uh, election and a rerun, or fresh election rather, was ordered by the Court of Appeal in three local government areas, which then means that Dauda Lawal, the incumbent governor of the PDP, will face again the former governor, now Minister of State for Defense, uh, Belo Matawali. In Kano, which Mr. Femi Falano specifically pointed out, 165,000 votes were wasted, resulting in a situation whereby the Court of Appeal uh, declared the candidate of the uh, APC as the winner in uh, Kano and not the incumbent NMPP uh, governor, who says that, well, he too will take the matter all the way to the Supreme Court. And the issue in Kano State was that certain ballot papers were not stamped. And because of that, uh, the court said those uh, ballot papers are invalid. And that was how, as a result of the deduction, uh, the candidate of the uh, APC in that state, uh, Gawusha, uh, Gawuna, uh, was then declared uh, the winner of the election. And he says, well, is it the fault of the voter that ballot papers were not stamped? Is it the issue that the voting did not take place? Why should the uh, voters of Kano State be punished for the failure, for the omissions of the, uh, of the uh, electoral body? In Plateau State, Caleb Mutfuang, the uh, sitting governor, was also said not to be the winner. The Court of Appeal ruled that there was no compliance with a court order directing PDP to conduct fresh, uh, to conduct fresh Congress in the various, uh, before the election. And that in this particular case, uh, if uh, there was no compliance with court order, INEC should have known. INEC that accepted all those PDP candidates that, have, that were now you know, rejected by the courts, including Benin La from uh, 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 Langtang and others from uh, Plateau State, from uh, the House of Reps member from uh, Josbasa, 
uh, federal uh, constituency, Napoleon and also Napoleon Ballon, Bali is from Plateau State, and then Simon Mwadkom uh, from Plateau North. These are persons who have been affected by that particular ruling. And that if INEC had done due diligence, this situation could have been avoided. So his position is that his overall position is that one, yes, compliance with court order is important. At the same time, INEC is also you know, are part of the problem. And in the various judgments that we have seen, you know, their lawyers have always made a point about INEC, you know, not doing what it has to do. So Mr. Falano has now gone uh, um, a step further to say that, in fact, the burden of proof should be on INEC and the winners of elections, not on the petitioner, because there is a presumption of regularity in election matters in favor of INEC. And yet we have seen in many cases that it's INEC's mistakes you know, causing uh, many of these distortions. But over, the overall point, which was the point, the overall point made by Mr. Fenfarano, is that there is a need for electoral reform to deepen the electoral framework. There is need for constitutional amendment. And this was uh, a major issue that came up at the weekend, at, at the uh, conference that I also attended, and where Mr. You know, um, Falano was also one of the resource persons organized by Policy and uh, Legal Advocacy Center, PLAC, here in Lagos. And the, what was the subject we were looking at? How to deepen electoral reform, and what should be the responsibility of the National Assembly? And Mr. Fallon already identified some of those responsibilities. For example, taking a look at specific sections of the Electoral Act that are problematic, particularly those sections dealing with electronic transmission of results, section 47, section 50, of the, uh, of the electoral act. It, as regards the uh, constitution, sec uh, section uh, 265, dealing with uh, time limitations uh, for hearing election, uh, election petitions. And also maybe perhaps section 134, you know, and th section 131 uh, dealing with eligibility. 134 about, you know, the conditions for declaring the person winner of the presidential election. So these are all issues that we have to take a look at. And I think that citizens also have a responsibility to articulate these issues and address the National Assembly and contribute to the reform of the electoral framework to deepen it. We have been on it since 1999, 24 years of return to a civilian democracy, but it looks like it's a journey, you know, and until, you know, we, we further improve it, deepen the framework, uh, we cannot begin to have that confidence in our electoral process, because what is eroded is confidence and trust in the electoral process. And on the other hand, is the issue raised by uh, the PDP, Debo Logwagba, uh, uh, spokesperson of the PDP, accusing some members of the APC, going about saying that they have friends in the judiciary. And he was quoting Honorable Yusuf Gadi, who was on this program, I think yesterday, uh, or the other day was it, you know, and he was quoting him and saying, look, he's saying uh, anybody who is aggrieved should go to the Supreme Court. We will meet them there. And he assumes that what it means is that, uh, you know, the APC has a control over the judiciary. I don't think that uh, there are lordships will agree to that. I don't think that uh, the uh, Chief Justice of, the, of Nigeria will accept that uh, accusation because there's no concrete proof. You can't on the basis of a statement made by a honorable member of the House of Representatives say, oh, this is proof positive. Uh, that uh, uh, the judiciary is being compromised by the APC. No. And uh, Vice President Atiku Abubakar say, oh, what they do is uh, grab and snatch and run with it. Well, okay. There will be all kinds of reviews of the electoral process. But that we need to deepen the electoral framework, that, of course, nobody can argue with. So a couple of points. Number one, it is obvious now in democracy that one of the most important voices you'll ever hear will be the court of public opinion. And that's why your voice, you watching me this morning, matters a great deal. Please do not allow anybody silence your voice. Speak out and be vocal about our democracy. Femi Falana has said rightly, a lot of reforms need to come in. Nobody, you know, really puts the penalty on INEC in all of the shenanigans they've done as regards the elections. They always go scot-free. And hey, the courts definitely go ahead and indict other people, but INEC is never indicted. Look at what is happening across the three elections. Now, anyway, the APC has been able to argue against it and say, oh, when they did it to us about four years ago in Zamfara State, we didn't say it was judiciocracy then. 
Why are you saying this now? Well, the further argument a lot of people will make is the role of INEC in all of this. Who nips INEC in the bud? We've seen what INEC did, even in the last Kogi elections. Nobody has been able to answer the question, how did people get those election sheets that they wrote results on even before the election was conducted? Till today, INEC has not given us an answer. Just like INEC has not given us an answer on the technical glitch that happened in the 2023 elections. I'll keep asking that question for the opt-in time. INEC never gives answers. Plays the ostrich every time. Puts his head in the sand. While we have a dickiness in the electoral system. Part of the things we'd like to call for electoral reforms. Section 60, other sections, even transmission. Because the case of transmission and use of IRF came up in the Zamfara case. And that's what the court is saying now. We have a discrepancy as regards INEC guidelines and what are the laws. Those same guidelines, INEC came out to make the law in Kogi elections recently. There's a lot of discrepancy as regards the electoral process in the country. And that's why I want you to speak up today. Get the number of your lawmaker and call your lawmaker and tell them we need to do electoral reforms because time is going. We're going to be in December. Next year, there's going to be a lot of talk about budgets and all of that. Probably before you know it, one year has gone, two years. At the end of the second year, lawmakers will not really look at you any longer. They are talking about electioneering and politicking. How can we nip all of this in the board? Also, constitutional reforms. The need for independent candidature, that's another one we should look at. Diaspora voting, I know that's before the House now. Let's look for ways we can use the laws to shape in our electoral process. As regards the opposition speaking, yeah, I think Abaka is talking about the fact that Nigeria is fast leading into, into the one part seat. The only way that will not happen is the people rise up their voice and the political actors stand firm. Because you see, I've noticed the trend. After the election judgment, these same politicians, because always what is needed for them, some of them are already gravitating towards the same people they said they were worse than anything in the last election cycle. And that's why Nigeria never moves forward. And that's why you see that the country in the end becomes overtaken by cabals, just like President Muhammadu Buhari said in an interview that was aired yesterday night. They said, oh, he must admit that things could have been done a lot better. And you are wondering, just like the narrative you wrote in your back page, Dr. Batsdi, I was you know, answering Nuhu Ribadu talking about bankruptcy. This same Nuhu Ribadu that was part of those that championed the Buhari candidature. A couple of people that served in Buhari government that are serving in this government. Now we're talking bankruptcy. Nobody's answering questions. The problem with Nigeria is that people don't answer questions when you ask them. That's why I say the most important voice in this democracy will be the voice of you watching me this morning at the court of public opinion. Don't stop talking. The governor of Zamfara State, Dalda Lawa, has called on supporters of the People's Democratic Party in the state to remain calm, urging them not to allow appeal court judgment to dampen their morale. The government who just returned from the governor who just returned from Abud, Abidjan, attending a meeting with the president of African Development Bank, was welcomed by the state by a large crowd of PDP supporters. The Court of Appeal has declared that for a governorship election inconclusive and ordered the rerun in three council areas. Governor Dauda Lawa says even if a fresh election has been conducted in the PDP, the PDP will win fair and square. He assured his supporters that the administration will change the fortunes of them for our states. <laughs>
in a terrible situation. Within the last five months, we have started transforming the state, and that is what they are concerned. That is why they are jealous. They don't want the progress of the state. We therefore remain committed, and we will continue to change the fortune of Zamfara. Inshallah, I thank you, and I wish you safe journey back to our respective destination. All right. Uh, so, a lot to talk about, Dr. Abati. Well, it's good to hear the uh, governor of Zamfara State appealing for calm and giving his supporters hope that they will go all the way to the, uh, 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 the polls that has been a fresh election that has been ordered in the three local governments of uh, Maradun, Gajan Maragi, Ma Magaji, and Bukunyum uh, local governments. Three local governments where we've been told that, uh, you know, the total number of votes are well in excess of about 150,000. We had a gentleman on this program speaking for the uh, All Progressives Congress who said that, you know, uh, the Matawale team is confident that they will win in uh, those three local governments and that could affect the outcome of the uh, election, which was declared inconclusive by the Court of Appeal in the ruling by... Uh, uh, by, the, uh, uh, by the court, by Justice uh, Sibyl Mwaka. Now, what was the issue then? The uh, Court of Appeal ruled that the election was inconclusive. Two, that INEC was wrong to have relied on results on the IREV portal, on the INEC uh, result viewing portal, to, to declare Dauda uh governor, instead of relying on from ECHA are the polling uh, units. Now, again, the point we were making earlier about Mr. Femi Falano saying that, look, INEC has to be held more responsible because people should not be suffering because of INEC submissions, which is a popular view. And many people think that, of course, yes, uh, that is a good uh, uh, way to go. And the other point, of course, made by Mr. Falano in this regard is that Election petitions should be determined before any administration is sworn in, which is also the point that many other commentators have made. The Bulua de Burua, Ulisa Bakuba, SEN, and even you know the panel on this uh, on this uh, morning show program, that as they do in Kenya, conclude all these uh, petitions, and then people can be sworn in. They can start on a clean slate uh, to prevent the kind of confusion the kind of chaos uh, that we have as a result of the effect of Section 285, 1 to 14 of the 1999 Constitution. So, well, uh, when that election takes place, it will be Daudalawa versus Belo Matawale. And beyond the plain issue of election, you know, of course, that there's no love lost between the PDP and the APC in Sanfara State. The Lawal administration, having raised many allegations uh, in terms of uh, the integrity of the Matawali administration that was there before. But now, you know, that issue will probably be in abeyance as they go back to those three local government areas to have fresh polls. Then at the end of the day, there will be further developments, we hope. One thing has to be said, what is the need for you, the Zamfara people? That's a constant question I'll constantly ask. We had the former governor of Zamfara State here when he was vying to be Senate president and ask him some critical questions about what he did when he was in Zamfara. And he tried to shove the question aside. And the question is, what has been done since Zamfara State was created in the late 90s? What has been done for that state? There's a lot of chaos. Zamfara State holds a record for not being able to pay his YAC fees. And there's a low level of development. The Human Development Index just shows everything. So why will a state so rich suffer so much? It goes back to leaders. Yeah, the new governor claims he's putting some reforms forward. He claims Matawale had not done any better. Only time will tell. Because when you look at the both parties, Matawale today and the new governor, Daudalawa, they are both from the PDPs. We all forget in a hurry that Matawale was a PDP candidate in the last election that lost. Then when the court ruled, he came in, then he crossed to the APC. How does in the PDP now? So it's not about political party affiliation. Because when you trace the trajectory, they were both from the same party. But it was just a tool for them to get in there. So it's more about the leader and what they do. 
He has come back after this court ruling. Definitely will still go up to the higher court. He's come back to show strength and his people have come to welcome him. But in all of this, what we should ask as the people is, apart from their politicking, how can we get the Human Development Index in Zanfara State higher? How can we stop our governors from doing needless projects? Because it looks as if the new needless scam project, big elephant in the room now, is everybody wants to do uh, an airport. We all saw the pictures of a very dilapidated airport that was said to have been 20% complete. Looks abandoned. But all of a sudden, rather than invest in schools, healthcare, and the basic needs to be able to develop human capacity in the state, it's always about gigantic airports. And when you look at it, you have airports in neighboring areas. So in all of this, what would change a lot of the Zamfara people? And it's only the Zamfara people that will have to speak up for themselves. And that's why democracy, we must have an active participation. Also, while we're doing all of this, yes, I think Dr. Bate said this at Nozim, we need to call for reforms in the electoral process. Because if we do not do this, then we do not move forward. But it's about you, the people, also calling for those reforms and screaming about it because we're quickly getting to the end of the year. At the end of next year, another year coming, the lawmakers will start thinking of elections and they will see any way possible and they will do anything possible to frustrate your attempts for those electoral reforms. But I tell you what, it's a season of awards for Arise News Channel. Yet again, the station has won the African Fashion and Designer Award 2023, which was held in Lagos at the sixth edition of the Fashion Designer Award. Promoting culture, embracing beauty of creativity in Africa, and also using this medium to provide a mentorship and empowerment for the younger ones from the slums area, and then to also use the A-list designers to add impact in terms of training, sketching and all that, at least with that, it's all about education. You know, uh, you being educated also, you can also learn, you know, fashion designing, whereby it can be a means of other mainstream incomes and all. Basically, it's all about promoting culture, value, norms, and then to also keep uh, promoting our heritage. I'm really proud of, you know, African designers these days. It is, I mean, I'm wearing one today, fully clad in one. Um, I'm also representing my culture at those states, it's a coral beads. So yes, I'm really proud of the African culture, I'm very proud of the African designers, proud of everybody making Africa proud. I mean, this is another great one. Congrats to Arise. Uh, apart from being your top news channel when it comes to political analysis, we've also done a lot in the cultural sector. The Arise Fashion Week has constantly been a beacon of hope to young designers out there. And it's been a tool for empowering millions of people. And it's so wonderful. And uh, Ozzy has been ringing in my ears that yesterday he finally did implication after we had to scream at the top of our voices. You know, uh, but uh, somebody is here. Baby is also saying that she didn't see the implication. That it was, uh, it was just uh, uh, drinks. But we appreciate what Ozzy did all the same. Uh, he tried. He for the tried first time. for ah. the first time. At least, you Ozzy, know. you tried. You know, Doctor, but you know when 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 a lizard falls from the tree and it comes and the tree and it comes up, and you do like this. If you don't praise me, I will praise myself. Yes, I will yeah, praise yeah. myself. He tried. He tried. So he tried. In fact, he did special requests, you know, for Doctor Abati. You know me, I'm a Proko manager. But so Doctor Abati, you want to say something about the award at home? Well, I mean, congratulations again to uh, Arite Television. It's not just television, as you said. Yeah. It's also about fashion. What means? What this means is that we are effectively in the cultural space in Nigeria. Yes. We are involved in education. We are involved in fashion. We're involved in entertainment. We're involved in the main business of news. Yeah. And, you know, this is understandable because media practice now is within the realm of what is called convergence. Yeah. You find media houses, you know, exploring the values of the age of convergence, you know, to build a brand that is strong. And these, uh, you know, awards that keep coming in droves uh, testify to the value of the Arise brand proposition and what we do here every day. And we want to thank all the people who continue to encourage us uh, through all manners of applause. Those who don't give us awards make phone calls to commend us. They write letters. They, you know, celebrate us on other platforms. And we're encouraged by that. And as I always say, the reward for hard work is more hard work.